How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I just did a, a vinyl plank uh, on steps video a few days ago and got it. Well, yesterday I put it out. Anyway, I used the Treadman stair jig, stair jig in that video and I had a lot of comments about it, wondering about it. So I thought I would dedicate a video specifically to that to answer all the questions about the Treadman stair scribe. Okay, so let's get going here. So, uh, what sets this apart from your average stair scribes? Most of your stair scribes are, they have a straight edge on them, okay, on the wall, which is all cool, you know, your walls will bow in or out or something like that, and your stair scribes will actually set on there uh, like that, and then you transfer that angle to your uh, piece of wood that you're going on there, or your vinyl plank or whatever, and you have a nice straight cut, perfect with the angle of the ball. However, check this out. You do run into situations like this right here. I'm gonna go see straight down right here. Uh, see this right here? So this wall right here actually sticks out in the center right here, okay? So look at that play in that wall right there. Now, if you put your stair, traditional stair scribe right up against this. Jerry Hawkins, $5. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate that, buddy. So if you put your traditional stair scribe right up against this, somewhere you're going to have a gap either in the back or in the front, okay? Because it's a solid side on your stair scribes. All of them are like that that I know of except for this one right here, okay? This has three adjustments on each side of it right here check this out so we got one plate right here one plate right here one plate right there and then also this one right here so we got three three adjustments for each side of the step okay so i can actually slide this over to my step push it up lock it down to the curve in this wall transfer this curve to my planks cut it and it's going to fit in here perfect you're not going to have any gaps right here on your step like you have with a straight piece where it teeters back and forth like that. This will actually concave to those perfect little uh, angles or curves in your wall like that. But a lot of people uh, will use a miter saw or a table saw or something like that. A table saw might work, but if you're doing vinyl plank and you've got a crook like that right there in the side of your step, you're going to want to use your knife, score it and snap it, and it's gonna snap off right perfect with that uh, curve right there, okay? I'm gonna set up a, a, I'm gonna set up a couple pieces, set this jig up on this step, this one right here in particular, because it does have that crooked spot in it right there, we're gonna cut a couple pieces of vinyl plank to go on this. <clears throat> Let's see here. I wanna be able to see this really good. Come right up here and uh, so, to start off with, I've got all three pieces loose. Look right here. Ooh, easy. These first two pieces are kind of spring-loaded. You see that? So when you set them down on there, it will automatically go straight with however the step is, okay? Then you tighten it down and tighten these other two down. I'll show you right here. I'm fixing to do it. If I'm in the way, uh, I'll do something like that. So another cool thing about this, it has these front plates right here, okay? So you can, it'll set on the front, it'll set right on your step right there, and it'll stop you from going back. So you get your width and your depth all in one cut, okay? Uh, unlike the other stair scribes, it has a solid piece there that's not adjustable in your length like that for the step, only the width of your step. This will get all your cuts, all your measurements in one single setting, okay? So I got it pushed all the way back like that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all these halfway lined up because I got it all slopped on there. Okay, so I got it lined up. Now remember, these are spring-loaded on both sides. So right off the bat, I'm gonna push it tight right there and then lock that down while I got tension on it. That's gonna hold my first two pieces right there. Actually, there we go. So this one and this one with the springs on it are now in position. But if I loosen that and pull it off, it's gonna uh, spring right back. So I gotta take and tighten these down, okay? 
That is the first two. Now you go just one side, one piece at a time. I'm gonna slide this piece right here all the way back. That's gonna give me my depth, okay, of the step. Push this one all the way over, tighten the middle one down. And there we go. Push this one all the way over and tighten the back one down, okay? It's just super easy. Once you do a couple of them, it might seem a little complicated or something at first. Once you start doing them, it's actually really easy and it goes real nice and fast. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna push them all over to the wall. They got these little handles there. Push it over to the wall, tighten it down, push it over, and tighten it down, okay? Now, once again, I got my, I got the depth of the step and the width of the step, okay? Obviously, you wanna raise one end at a time so you don't disturb these. They are locked down, but you don't wanna disturb them. Uh, this also, because it has this front on it, you can, you can take these off if you want to. You can take these front pieces off. They're just on there with the nuts or uh, turn dials right there. But yeah, if it has a, there's all kinds of attachments and stuff that goes to this. This jig will shrink down 22 inches and a half, 22 and a half inches uh, narrow for small steps. It'll go all the way out to nine foot and a half inch, depending on what you buy, okay? This setup right here goes to 34 inches out to 60, 61 inches. You can, however, buy uh, different extensions. I got the small extension right here myself for this. If you attach this one in there, this will give you a shorter step. This is the one that will take you down to 20, 22 and a half inches. If you, they got two more extensions that will go in here that will allow you, like I said, to go all the way up to nine foot and a half inch, okay? So this will definitely get 99.9% uh, .9 of any kind of step out there, okay? It's, it don't matter how big it is, I mean, rarely are you gonna see a 10 foot step where this would not make it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna set this down here for a second, give me a couple pieces of vinyl plank put together, and we are gonna, gonna Cut these bad boys and stick them on there and see just how precise that cuts on that crooked curved wall. I would never do that on a job, by the way. <laughs> Take a hammer and beat that lip, but we're not on a job. All right, I should have gotten me a straight edge as well. But anyway, <coughs> set that bad boy right on there. And what I want to do is take and mark my, uh, I'm going to mark the back of this, because right on this mark, that's where the back of my step is, okay? So right there's my back measurement. Now what I want to do, this right here was the crooked side, so <clears throat> I'm going to take my concave blade here, and it's really important, obviously, keep your blade straight up and down if you go in or out or anything like that. Obviously, it's going to change the change the form of this cut right here. So keep your blade straight up and down. Use the side of this right here as a straight edge, okay? I can actually feel that curve in when I rub my finger on it right there. So I'm gonna put my blade straight up and down. I ain't gonna push hard because I don't wanna take a chance on slipping or going under there. So just gonna give me a few easy little uh, score marks right there. On that side, that's gonna be enough to break it. this side for a straight edge as well keeping my blade straight up and down of course man I got my blade a little crooked right there right after saying that maybe I didn't mess it up too bad okay got my side cuts now uh, I don't have a straight edge in here I guess I'm just going to use piece of this final plank right here. I'm going to line my back marks up right now and, and cut those off. And that's going to be my depth of the step. I don't know if I mentioned or not that uh, this box right here that the tread man comes in, you can buy it separate without the box. You can buy the box separate or you can buy it as a combo kit with the box and the scribe all at the same time. Uh, 
So this box right here, <clears throat> this is an actual toolbox. Let me show you that real fast. So, Hello, Michael. Put your scrapping stuff in here. Set this on there. And then this is actually your toolbox. We'll set right on there. Like so. Lock it down. Lock it down. And there is your toolbox for your scribe. And you see how easy it comes apart and creates a nice little, nice little workspace there. So this thing is super handy. Uh, super handy. Really good. Really good thinking on the, the table right there. That was nice. That thing works out great. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and break these apart. We're gonna check these out. Get off of there. <coughs> we'll cut the vacuum away so it's not sticking out further. Yeah, obviously you know that when you break it you have a little backing sticking out, so just gonna shave that off so it's not sticking out past the face of the plank. Okay. I feel like I'm talking to uh, installers here instead of DIY people in this video, so I'm, I'm taking it for granted that you guys know what I'm talking about and what I'm doing things for. people ask about what do you do when the step has got a bow in it or anything like that and I told them about this jig and uh, then they always have the question well what about cutting it because your blade your saw miter saw will obviously only cut straight so if you got a bow in the middle of your step like we do right here you're not going to be able to get that with a miter saw so you have to score it and snap it like this uh, if you're doing hardwood or laminate or something that you can't score and snap, I'm still going to put my line on it with this right here and cut it with my table saw so I can follow my line. <coughs> I broke that tongue off when I've done that, so it's not going to lock back in there. Anyway, it should fit in there nice anyway. Let's check it out and see how it fits. I keep those together so I broke it. <coughs> Okay, come right over here. Now this edge was all crooked. You guys seen it teeter with that piece of wood? Look straight down on that so you can see that there's not a single gap on that. It's completely conformed to that crooked spot in the wall right there, okay? Check this out again, see that? See the play in that? And look at that step, it's conformed to it perfect, okay? So that is what the Peroni Treadman totally ranks against all the other ones. It's totally a step above it because of those adjustments on the side, okay? Again, this is the only one that I know of that has the separate adjustments like that on the side for crooked spots like that. That's beautiful. If you've got this machine right here, there's no other, uh, <coughs> what kind of obstacles is going to get in your way to where you're going to have a problem cutting this. Okay. So, again, use that thing for your straight edge and no crooked step. If you use a, just a regular, like I said, a regular scribe or something like that, there's no way that's going to fit on there because it's just going to push right up against it. See the crack there or the crack there, or if you push it up, you're going to have a big crack in the back or a big crack in the front. Let's look at there without that. 
completely clean, all the way flush, all the way up against that throughout the whole step, man. You, this is absolutely the best jig. You can get so precise and so perfect, just like you see right there. Check this out. That is awesome, okay? And that's not just a crooked piece of wood. Let me show you. Let me look right here. Let's see there? It's, it's definitely the wall, okay? The wall is what's done now. See that? It's definitely crooked and it's perfect, okay? I don't know what else to say about that. I want to I quit repeating myself. Um, those, this, <coughs> this also has attachments that hooks on here and here, like these right here, I've actually got them in the back. I'm not going to go get them though. But if you do a riser and tread combo, one piece, you can actually get your riser measurements and your tread measurements all in one, uh, all in one thing, okay? If you do a tread and riser, which is opposite from the riser and tread, if you do a tread and riser, they also have attachments for that. So you can do the tread and it goes up for the riser. For instance, on your rubber stair treads for commercial applications, you can do your tread and riser all in one cut and have it all perfect. What would you recommend cutting that edge if you were working with laminate? If I was working with laminate, I would use this to scratch it right here and follow my mark with a table saw. Because again, if you're using a chop saw to do it, a miter saw or something, it's gonna be a straight cut. Whether you set your saw on a three or four degree angle, it's still gonna be a straight three to four degree angle, okay? It's not gonna curve like it did right here on this step using this. So uh, score it with this, just like I did with my knife, and ease it through the table saw and follow your line, okay? That's the best way you're gonna, that's the way you're gonna get the best results doing that right there, okay? <clears throat> that's gonna be all I got to say. If there's not any more questions or anything like that, okay, all right, well, Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. Until next time, uh, I will uh, I put links to the video where I did these steps the other day. There's links all in the description for this. I'll go ahead and put them in the description for this one as well, okay? Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, FBSD's out.